Good morning. My name is Tangie Christmas, and I'm here to talk to you about a very important topic, audience analysis. Now, in order to follow this along in this lecture, um, you'll find it helpful to have a handout. Um, and now, but this handout is, that you received, if you're in my class, has blanks in it. So if you get into slides that look like this, don't be surprised. Just do the best you can to fill in the blanks. Pause the video if you need to, and um, you'll be right on track. I do the fill in the blanks for one reason and one reason only. Past students have told me that it helps them to connect with the material better. So um, if you have a disability of some sort that, and you're in my class, and filling in the blanks becomes uh, a hindrance, let me know, and we will modify uh, things so that we can accommodate you. In the meantime, I'm going to go to the version that does not have blanks in it so that we can get underway. analysis is a very important topic. Oftentimes it's overlooked though because it does require a lot of legwork. Uh, what actually is audience analysis? Well, it's an information gathering process. Uh, why are you gathering this information? You're gathering relevant information so that you can adapt your presentation uh, in a manner that best suits those who will re who receive your message. And now, it's like planning for a trip. Someone can offer you a fabulous trip but if they don't tell you where you're going on the trip, it becomes very difficult to know how to pack uh, and prepare for that particular excursion. So the same holds true here. When I stand to give a presentation, I'm taking students on a journey. Uh, if I don't know my student, uh, my students very well, if I don't know my audience, that it becomes very difficult to know how to prepare the message so that the journey is successful. In any case, a common pitfall that a lot of speakers get into is judging their presentation based on their views. They, they think based on their beliefs, their values, their perceptions, that um, they can adequately uh, determine the effectiveness of the presentation. But um, instead, what you want to do is to see what you can do to look into the values, attitudes, and beliefs of those uh, who will receive your message. Again, we're going for the relevant ones uh, because they have a different mindset that you have. They come from a different vantage point and um, you, they may not see things the way that you see it. When you do this, this is known as perspective taking and you should make note of that. You may see that on a future quiz or test if you're in my class. Yeah, learning how to put yourself in the seat of the person who received your message is a very important uh, skill set for a speaker to, to obtain. Now, what do we mean by attitudes? Well, the atti every time a person encounters a presentation, they have a mindset, uh, a predisposition uh, concerning that presentation. Uh, and um, the more you can understand that mindset, the easier it is to know what to pack in your presentation. Those attitudes or predispositions are based on beliefs and values. Well, let's take a closer look at those then. What are beliefs? Well, beliefs are our feelings about what is real, okay? Uh, perception, there's a saying that's that, a quote that says perception is truth. It, it is in the mind's eye. If a person believes something to be a certain way, then it is. In, in college, I had a beautiful roommate. This girl during Valentine's Day would have a mailbox filled with, you know, uh, secret uh, cards from secret admirers and gifts from known admirers. And uh, while just while speaking one day, while teasing about, I said to her, "Oh, be quiet, oh big head girl," and she just went off. And I thought, oh my gosh, what in the world happened? Well, I found out later that when she was growing up, she was in a household of five girls. She was the baby of five girls. And whenever her sisters didn't like something uh, that she was saying to them, they'd say to her, be quiet, old, big head girl. And she actually started to believe somewhere in there that she had an enlarged head. Yes. And I'm sitting here going, you're ravishing. People are falling all over themselves to get your attention. And you actually think that you have an enlarged head. People don't, don't do that. But she that was that was 
truth in her mind. And it wasn't until she began to really think things through that uh, she challenged that mindset and actually saw the beautiful person that she really was inside and out. Those beliefs, however, come about because of values. And our values are those enduring standards that get placed within us uh, about what's good or bad, right or wrong, or simply important or unimportant. If you have a great topic, you've spent a lot of time preparing, but your audience members don't see it as important, you're going to struggle to get that topic across to them. So uh, understanding that they, don't, uh, that they don't see the importance of it could be very key to the success of your presentation and understanding how that value then spills over into a belief and influences a mindset uh, becomes uh, all the more important. I want to show you an exercise that, that I think will help you understand it better. This exercise is located in uh, my online web, uh, web study course uh, and, and uh, learning unit three, okay? All right, so we're going to end this and collapse for a minute and go into that. And in this, in chapter six on audience analysis, I uh, start to discuss this. Down here, I put in a table that I think shows this correlation a little better. Here we have a situation where uh, the, uh, the person is going to talk about the topic of the death penalty being legalized, okay? So the person is going to, it has this as their topic, and the dominant views in the audience of uh, the, the value system is that life is sacred. Those, the, those view, values uh, result in a belief that give, the giving and taking of life is only to be handled by a deity, a god. And so what do you think the attitude or mindset is likely to be towards this topic? It's going to be negative. Okay? Now, you take that same subject and you put it in, uh, in an audience that has a value system that life is valuable and that life is a privilege to be gained or lost depending on your actions, uh, yet, you know, that becomes the belief, then the, the same topic will be... Uh, will uh, be viewed in a positive light or the mindset of the predisposition of the audience towards that topic before the speaker actually speaks will be positive, okay? If we're looking at the uh, issue of age, so to speak, and we're trying and we're looking at uh, the dominant attitude concerning age, um, if there is a value system that says the elderly are to be esteemed, which, and, and that's, that creates a belief that with age comes wisdom, and the speaker is a young doctor only two years out of medical school, how do you think that, what do you think the predisposition is going to be towards that particular speaker? It's going to be skeptical or negative, okay? Now that doesn't mean that speaker can't win them over, but if the speaker is, is aware of the negative mindset, they can incorporate things in their presentation that might address that mindset or disposition and change that attitude, okay? Without it, they may struggle the whole time and really not understand why. And then there's a fourth example that flips that and says that the elderly have little to offer. And that is the value system among some groups. It's sad, but it's true. That old people are stoic and, and uh, complacent. And that a young medical uh, teacher, a young teacher two years out of college, in, in a, with a group like this would be perceived in a positive way. So that hopefully that helps you understand that correlation of values uh, and how and beliefs and how they then impact attitudes and that predisposition. Anything that you can investigate that discloses that to you will make it easier for you to prepare for your presentation. And that's why we need to engage in audience analysis. Okay, <clears throat> moving quickly along. Let's go back to our PowerPoint and pick up where we left off. So, <clears throat> what are people likely to have a mindset about? Well, I've already started to touch on that a little bit. They're going to have a mindset, a predisposition, or an attitude towards you, the speaker, towards the speaking event itself, and towards the topic. Towards you, the speaker, towards the occasion, and towards the topic. Let's look at each of these a little more closely. When it comes to a, the speaker, audiences respond better to speakers they know 
uh, and like then they do the speakers they don't know or they uh, know but don't like, okay? You never want to fall into the, <laughs> that last category if you can, uh, if you can avoid it. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, uh, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So what do you do to put your best foot forward? Well, you remember to operate using the audience's Bill of Rights. And earlier in the semester, we talked about the need for a speaker to show up on time, to make sure that they remain respectful towards their audience, that to um, uh, give good examples and, and things like that. Um, don't forget the Bill of Rights and the things that it states about the public speaking venue. We also talked about ethical management of the speaking venue, that you should handle your topic with competence, um, no, uh, showing that you have a strong knowledge of your of your subject matter with goodwill, uh, meaning that you have the audience's best interest at heart and um, with good um, good sense, goodwill, and good moral character, which means you're trustworthy and straightforward. Michael Josephson's pillars of character also add to that. Now. That being said, sometimes when you do, even when you do all of that, you're going to bump into a mindset that is against you, a, a predisposition. This is called prejudgment. And we saw some of that. The, the group that that uh, viewed the, the young speaker as negative, well, they this is a group that discriminates based on age. And, um, and so what do you do? Because stereotyping happens to everybody. You may think you're, you're going to escape, but you won't. People won't like you because you're too pretty, or you, you're too ugly, you're too tall, you're too short, you're too fat, you're too skinny. You came from the wrong side of the tracks. You're part of the wrong ethnic group. You're the wrong gender. It happens. What do you do when it happens? Well, the temptation is to get angry because it's unjust. But you don't have the luxury of getting angry. A speaker that gets angry will just undermine their own success because they'll, they will just become an angry, angry version of whatever stereotype they've been labeled with. So get, get rid of that notion of getting angry. Uh, instead, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you work diligently at, uh, once you discover this mindset, at providing an example that's contrary to that. Help them understand that their stereotype has a flaw in it by being different. And, uh, and, and a lot of times that will break it down. Now this isn't fantasy land. It won't solve all of the issues, but it certainly will help more than getting angry would. When I went to college, I was uh, one of few minorities that went into certain classes. And my professors initially thought that I was cheating because they hadn't encountered a student of my ethnic background who could write as well as I could. And so they did all kinds of things. They did in-class assignments and took writing examples and all of that. And um, finally, after all of those antics, the one professor just came to me and confessed. But after he confessed, we became very good friends and I ended up going to study abroad over in Europe. So, you know, don't get angry. Break down the stereotypes. I'm sure the next person that came in their classroom that had a similar background to mine had an easier track of it because I did not get angry. I just, I stayed the course and, and tried to make a change, all right? Now, these people will oftentimes have a mindset concerning the occasion itself. People are more positive when they come to things like a pep rally than they are when they come to things that they're made to attend, okay? It depends on whether the audience is captive or made to be in attendance as a captive audience or an audience that's there voluntarily. What, you, what can you do when you encounter this? Well, there are four things that have helped me, and I think they'll help you as well. The first thing is validate legitimate feelings about the presentation. If it's early and, and the people are yawning, don't take it personally. Don't feel like they're trying to be uh, challenging. It, it's, it is early, and maybe that's, that's you know just a human response that you're experiencing. Also, address any negative known assumptions about the presentation. Sometimes I'd go to talk to middle schoolers and their professors unknowingly would have them frightened about the presentation. they make them think that I was there to almost tell them off and to preach to them about getting good grades. And so I, I took a different, um, a, a different angle and I would often open up with a statement like the one that's written in your PowerPoint. And how many of you believe that this is going to be another boring presentation that tells you about getting good grades? And they raise their hands and I said, how many of you have been threatened concerning your behavior towards me in this? And they raise their hands and said, look, 
I, I want to talk to you about uh, grades, but I want to deal with something um, that's beyond just grades. I want to talk to you about knowledge and what we do with knowledge. And I, I like it when you talk to me. I, I like it when we mix it up and you won't get in trouble if you express yourself. And some and students did. Sometimes I get some really interesting answers, but they would then open up and listen better, okay? Uh, then the third thing that I do with captive audiences, but this is not for the new speaker, unless you are really, really skillful in your dealing with your subject matter. Give them a voice. Let them tell you what their expectations are of the presentation, what they hope to get out of it. And then if you can, align your desires for the presentation with theirs. Now they may say, well, we just want to cut it short and get out into this nice weather. And that would be wonderful, but if you, if, but you can't do that in most instances. You have to, to uh, host uh, the presentation and go through the material. But you can address issues that they're really interested in and fold them in with your information uh, if, you, if you're skillful and if they are a genuine audience about this. So those four steps have helped me deal with um, captive audiences more effectively, and I think they'll help you too. Lastly, what's the mindset that people have concerning the topic? Getting information that reveals this to you can be very important. There are different, uh, different ways to, uh, different questions to ask that can help reveal this. One, what do listeners know about your subject? If they're already well versed on it, you don't need to lay as much of a foundation. If they don't know anything about it, you may then then the foundation may be needed. What level of interest do they have in it? If they're very interested in it, you don't have to uh, incorporate things to build interest. If they're not, then you know you have some legwork to do. And lastly, do they have feelings about this subject? Are they emotional about it in any way? Usually the person who invited you to speak can disclose these things to you if you don't know much about your audience. But there are other ways to get information, uh, and that's what we're going to go into next. But for the sake of time, I'm going to cut it off right now and give you a break from the material uh, and then come back and we'll talk about different ways you can discover uh, the attitudes uh, that people have about you, the speaker, about the occasion itself, and uh, ultimately about the topic you're going to uh, discuss. Thanks.